Hi, in this video I would like to explain about the concept of reflection from a convex mirror and how the ray diagrams are drawn for various positions of the object. I have taken five positions in this video. So we draw a convex mirror first and we plug in the principal axis passing through the center of the mirror vertically. So you can see a point O there and O is the center of the mirror from top to down. And you can see that the mirror has a white uh, line and a blue line and the blue line is kind of uh, trying to show the reflective coating which enables the glass to reflect. So the point F1 and F2 are focal points. F1 is on the real side and OF1 is equal to the focal length. Similarly, OF2 is equal to focal length. The point to F2 is very important and it's the center of curvature. So if you put a compass needle on 2F2 and draw a radius, then you should be able to draw the convex uh, mirror's curvature. 2F1 is again twice of F1 from the point O. So we bring on the lights and we are putting an object uh, beyond 2F1 and now we'll draw the ray diagram. The bottom of the arrow doesn't need a ray diagram because the light will pass through the bottom of the arrow, go to the mirror and reflect back. So the image of that bottom of the arrow will always lie on the principal axis, that white line. From the top of the arrow, uh, the, which is our object, we'll draw four rays. And those four rays will take care of all situations. The green ray, and I must mention that all these rays are actually white light, and the green, orange, blue, yellow are only for illustration purpose. They are not the wavelengths of light. The green ray is parallel to the principal axis, and when it reflects, such a ray will reflect in such a way that its dotted line hits the focal point F2. The orange ray is aimed towards the center of curvature to F2. So it strikes the mirror at an incident angle of 90 degrees. Therefore, the angle of reflection is also 90 degrees and the orange ray comes right back to the tip of the arrow. You don't see a, another orange ray coming out at a different angle. The blue ray is aimed at the focal point F2 and therefore it reflects back parallel to the principal axis. So in a sense, the green ray and the blue ray are mirror image of each other. The green ray was parallel to the principal axis. It reflected such that it's aimed at F2. The blue ray was aimed at F2 and reflected parallel to the principal axis. Now coming to the yellow ray, the yellow ray is aimed at the center of the mirror. So in this case, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So the yellow ray therefore is going down below. Now extend these rays backwards and you can see a virtual image forming there, which is imaginary, erect, and diminished. So there are three things that we'll talk about an image. Is it real or imaginary? If the dotted lines are meeting, then it's an imaginary image, virtual image. And is it erect or inverted? And is it small or larger? Now let's take a, an object exactly at 2F1. So we are trying to bring the object closer to the mirror. We do the same thing, bring the lights from the left, and we draw the same four rays. Green parallel to the principal axis, orange aimed at 2F2, blue ray is aimed at F2, and the yellow ray is aimed at O. And you can see the reflection pattern is very consistent exactly as it was before. Now extend those four rays backwards as dotted lines and you can see the image formation. It's an imaginary one, it's a virtual image, it's erect, and it's diminished in size. So we have covered the three parameters for the image. Next, we will bring the object even closer to the mirror. We'll follow the same principle. We're not going to do anything new. Once you're used to this, you can do it very easily. So here's the object between 2F1 and F1. Bring on the lights from the left. The rays of light will go from left to right, therefore, because the, the lights are behind the arrow. And uh, we draw the four rays that we have drawn before. The green ray, the orange ray aimed at 2F2, the blue ray aimed at F2, and the yellow ray aimed at O. In a real exam situation, of course, you would draw all these rays as white rays, because uh, here it's only for example, and these are not the wavelengths of light. And when you extend these rays back, you get your image, which is virtual, it's erect, and it's diminished in size. 
so we have covered the three parameters required for an image it's really quite simple now we will bring the object even closer to the mirror and place it exactly at the focal point f1 and let's see what happens uh, in this case so the object is on f1 we will draw the same four rays that we did before there is no change and we should get the result as well in the same manner so there you are the green ray the orange ray blue ray and the yellow ray and as we extend them backwards we get the image which is once again between O and F2 it is virtual it is erect and it is diminished in size so we are seeing a kind of a consistent pattern for the image no matter where we keep the object we are getting the image in more or less the same position and type that's good now we will go to the last position where we have brought the object even closer to the mirror so now we draw the principal axis and place the object between F1 and O it can't get any closer than this so we draw the same four rays because we can do that and uh, we, sh let's, we should get the results so we draw one ray parallel to the principal axis the one ray aimed at to F2 one ray aimed at F2 and one ray aimed at O nothing different from what we did before and as we extend the rays backward we get dotted lines which help in image formation therefore the image is virtual because of the dotted lines it's uh, erect and it's diminished in size so you can see that the image is always falling between O and F2 this is why the convex mirror is used in cars because no matter how the traffic is moving behind you, you always get a consistent image. Thank you and have a great day.